Yo, long hairs. Welcome to episode 94 of Let It Ride, where we talk long hair in business, advocate for hair equality, and celebrate men's long manes with hair whips and high fives. If you're a guy with long hair, you're in the right place. I'm here with the one and only El Moreno. Yeah, what's up? I am El Rubio. We're at the Long Hairs Global Headquarters, and today we are set to introduce you to the newest long hair on the team. But first, this episode is brought to you by Hair Ties for Guys, the finest hair ties in the world, which hold your hair snugly without creasing, tugging, ripping, breaking, or otherwise mutilating your hair. Plus, fishing lures, smoking hot mermaids, and bandoliers of ammunition will show that you mean business. Stop using cheap, crummy hair ties that snap and rip your hair out. Tie up your locks with hair ties for guys, and you will be a believer. You can find these and other superior products for men with long hair at thelonghairs.us. And contrary to popular opinion, long hairs do care. That's why we've established a proud relationship with Children with Hair Loss, our nonprofit charity partners who provide hair replacements at zero cost to children and young adults facing medically related hair loss. Through Long Hairs Do Care, we donate 1% of our revenue to children with hair loss. And since 2015, the Long Hairs has donated over $60,000. You can find the show notes, links, and updates from this episode at thelonghairs.us. And while you're there, subscribe to our email list for weekly long hairs freshness. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for. He is the man on my left. He immediately added size and strength to the team, essentially bulldozing his way onto our staff with brute force. He is the rookie with the wave. El Spencerino! Morning, brothers. What up, dog? What's up? That was the best introduction I think I have ever had. Great. We'll get that on a loop later on today. You can play it for your wife all night long. Welcome to the Long Hairs team. Welcome to your first episode of Let It Ride. Spencer Nielsen, we are pumped to have you on the Long Hairs staff. Dude, pumped to be here, for sure. So, just... Introduction, quick intro, where are you from and what have you been doing up until joining our team here at the Long Hairs? I am from Logan, Utah. Um, born and bred. It's, if you've ever seen, what's it called, Footloose with Kevin Bacon, that's pretty much what my hometown is like. Up until now, I've been traveling all over the world, playing in a band, not at the same time, unfortunately. Um Drummer, right? Drummer, yeah. Um, it's not ideally my genre, but you know, it was fun while it lasted. Uh, let's see. Majored in psychology, and up until now, I've all of my jobs have been working with people, helping others, all that sort of thing. So, and cosmetology recently. Uh, yeah, as of about 2016, I've been a licensed cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And COVID didn't help so much with the uh, barbering business, obviously. Yeah, but it was it was kind of a I think it was I think it was a blessing in disguise, in all honesty, because I you know a lot of people that are doing hair nowadays, you're spending ten hours a day behind the chair, you're killing your back trying to get all the right angles and all that sort of thing. So this this gave me an opportunity to finish school, and uh, actually helped me find you guys. So. I think it was a, the Rona did have its benefits. Yeah. Mm. Think anyone could find the silver lining there? Absolutely. So how did you come to learn about the long hairs and how did you end up sitting here on Let It Ride? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sitting here on Let It Ride by the grace of God, <laughs> but uh, I found, I found you guys by accident. Um, when the pandemic hit, I thought, you know what? I'm going to grow my hair out because when I was younger, it was down to my shoulders and I just loved it. Uh, but then I thought, you know, you're a grown up now. You have to have short hair because that's professional. Um, but I figured if I wasn't working, let's let's just grow it out. And I was Googling um, ways to style your hair, um, ways to trim your hair should you need to and all that. And I found you guys completely by accident. It was the getting through the awkward stage article that I happened upon as well as the ways to style your long hair. And I would at that point was pretty well hooked but uh, read up on everything that you guys do for charity and i was like these guys are sick hmm. and then i found out you were in chula vista 
and I was like, I have to be a part of this. This is, this is the shit, man. Yeah. So, dude, uh, I, and then you willed your way here, like basically got yourself a, a job. I mean, you forced your way into the door, made some threats. flexed your biceps, and said, <laughs> "Freaking hire me." Let me no, but really, I think, uh, like, in a serious note, um, you know like making something happen for yourself, like is what you did. And it's a, it's, it's a good example, uh, or your kind of story of, and you being on staff now is a good example of that. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, what were you thinking? Cause it went a few months, like, right. Yeah. You'd send an email, you did stuff. So like, how did you, what were you thinking and how the heck did you eventually seal the deal? Uh, I, I just had a feeling this whole time. I'm like, you know, I've got to be a part of this in, in some way or another. And so I, I sent an email that first day and I was like, what, what can I do to help you guys out? What can I do to become a part of this? Because it's just, it's epic, you know? And I think it was, uh, it may have been Elevano that originally responded to me. So he said, you know, do you have an Instagram that we can check out? Do you have, you know, anything like that, that I can send to the core for? And, um, then I didn't hear anything for a while and so I reached out again I said fellas what's going on I need to talk to somebody here you know I'll clean the toilets if I have to <laughs> you know uh, if you want to give me a, a, a nickname it can be El Bastardo if you want <laughs> I'm happy to do whatever you need and uh, then Moreno reached out to me and he actually called me and I was kind of starstruck when that one happened I'm not going to lie I was like holy shit El Moreno is actually talking to me on the phone and um you said, you know, we're going to get your foot in the door here. Just come in and talk to us. And it was, it all went from there. I was walking through the doors of the HQ. I was just like, I can't believe this. This is a dream come true. So without standing like a brown noser, this was a dream come true. Dude, that's awesome. Won a lot of persistence and every time meeting, there were just a lot of indicators showing up when you say you're going to show up, you know, mm-hmm. bringing what you say you're going to be being prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, just persistence and uh, a sense of humility too. Like you said, I'll do anything you got, you know, mm-hmm. part-time, full-time. What can I do? Want to help out? Yeah. And just that uh, persistent follow-up and mm-hmm. really just tenacity. And then uh, really presented yourself well all the times that we met each other and mm-hmm. just uh, we're like, well, shit, man, we, we kind of just got to get them on somehow. Got to mm-hmm. find a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it lined up perfect for us. Like we needed help over there with yeah. the, at the warehouse and, mm-hmm. That's really kind of our entry level spot, and we were moving El Garvinsky into a different different role, and yep. just like timing and persistence, and the universe just delivers. The stars aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it certainly felt like it was a perfect opportunity, and I mean, I know you said uh, at first you're like, you know, fulfillment may not be exactly what you want it to be, but dude, I I love it. I Good. really do. Dude, like, heck yeah. I get a I get a blast my music. I get to hang out with Goose. Um, and it's really cool to see all the different names of people and where they're from that are getting these ties, you know. And I was telling I was telling Rubio the other day, I wish I had a little bit of extra time because for a lot of these people I want to write them a note on their packing mm. slip, like Yeah, you know, thanks so much for doing this, or if I see that they've got a coupon for their birthday, just happy birthday. Yeah. There was one actually um, of a kid that's from uh, my hometown, and uh, he lived right down the street from my old high school. No way. And so I, I actually did write him a note on it. I said, dude, I went to Mountain Crest. Nice. You know? So <laughs> it's just, you know, it's it's really surreal almost seeing how many people are into this. Yeah. So you are a fulfillment specialist just for everyone out there, and you are now, I mean, you are fulfilling orders and stocking the warehouse uh incredible seeing the names and locations and the orders coming through every single order is a person yep. we talked about this a little bit before mm-hmm. so chances are if you're putting in an order el spencerino is packing it up and putting it on your position yeah right. with authority i see your name and i see where you live <laughs> <laughs> very true yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm a nice guy though i won't hurt you <laughs> So you answered a few hair questions just briefly. This is not your first time growing it out, but let's just dive a little deeper on the lettuce here. You had long hair past your shoulders as a kid. Uh, you said, you know, as an adult now, hey, I, 
I can make my own choices and grow it out. Just give us a little more about the uh, hair story, including the first time you had it long. Sure. I mean, I, I first grew it out when I was about 15 years old. Um, I had just started playing in a band. And so obviously, you know, ipso facto, you have to have long hair if you're going to do that. Um, and I just loved it. But it was such a battle with um, with with my mother and father um, and specifically kind of the the culture that I grew up in, um, it was really looked down on. Um, people were assuming the worst when they would see it, um, and they would they would assume I was you know no good. I was doing drugs. I was you know this that and the other thing. And um, I'm almost kind of glad that that happened because that kind of helped me build that conviction to keep growing it out. It's like. I don't really care what you think. I know who I am, and I like long hair, you know. Um, but then, as when I got older, I was like, ah, it's time to cut it off. Unfortunately, what what really did it was um, becoming a missionary. Um, so I had to have short hair for those two years, and that was that was hard. Was that in the Mormon Church? It was, yeah. I didn't realize you did a you did your mission. Yeah, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, what was that like? Where, yeah. yeah, where did you get? Is it called station or what is it? <laughs> I, was, I was assigned. Uh, I was I was called actually to uh, Hawaii, and I was there for two years. Not a bad listen, deal. <laughs> listen, when God loves you, He sends you to the best place. Because He could have sent me to South Dakota or some shit. Yeah, but uh, nothing against people from South Dakota. It's just kind of boring. Anyways, um, it was great. I absolutely loved it. I, and as a missionary, I was, I was just like I am now. Like, if you, if you want to hear what I believe, I'm more than happy to share it with you. But if you don't, well, then we can talk about something else. You know, what do you believe in? Why don't sure. we talk about that, you know? So it was a huge growing experience for me as a 19-year-old kid going out to a place you've never been to, having to survive on your own. And it was, it taught me a lot of things about myself. And I think that was that was really the whole purpose of it for me. But uh, like I said, I had to have short hair the whole time, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Did you have like a because it's usually pairs, right? So you had a partner or something? Companion. Companion. OK. Yep. yep. And you guys are going door to door or cold calling people. Yep. I mean, what is, what get just some examples or maybe your highlight one or something? What are those interactions like? And, you know, do you get a lot of heat or? We, we were pretty lucky because people in Hawaii are really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, so really the mean people were the Caucasian folks. They would slam the door on us or they would try to get in, in arguments with us. <laughs> we called it Bible bashing. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the, the locals, the Polynesians, you know, your Hawaiians, Tongans, Samoans, et cetera, et cetera, they're actually really, really friendly. Um, we would we would meet people that you know, didn't know who we were. They weren't necessarily interested, but they would invite us into their house to eat. With oh, them. wow. Nice. So it was it was a really, really good experience in that regard because I was able to learn so much about other cultures. Yeah. And the way people do things because in Utah, there's just not a whole lot of diversity. There's five African-Americans in Utah and they all play for the jazz. So, I mean, mm. you just don't see anybody that's not white or um, predominantly Mexican there. So living amongst a whole melting pot of different cultures was that was the highlight for me yeah you know it made all the doors slammed in my face worth it yeah i have to ask just a little bit more about the tactics because <laughs> we've all met or had those experiences sure and i often have wondered like what is the process is there a process that you are required to follow or if you were to go back and it Hey, tactically, I think we can uh, approach this a little bit better. What if we ask this question first or instead of go, are, did you have the leeway to try to change or experiment with different tactics or ways of approaching people to, to have a, a, a greater success rate? Or is it pretty clear and regimented in terms of this is how you do it and this is how we do it and that's just the way? There was quite a bit of leeway, actually. Um, you know, we would we would practice, we would role play. Um, I mean, it's, it's really no different than when you're pitching an idea for, for the company that you work for, you know, yeah. you want to, you want to grab, exactly, you know, um, or if you want to grab somebody's attention, you want to, 
to get their interest. There, there are ways that you would do that through asking questions, you know, hey, have you ever heard about this? Or what do you know about this? You know, and, and a lot of it was, um, it was interesting to hear what a lot of people's uh, perceptions were about the Mormons. Mm. A lot of them are not true. <laughs> Um, but it was actually, it was, it was actually really fun to learn what people like one guy thought that we couldn't eat white bread, <laughs> which I, I was just like, dude, really? <laughs> um, so there's, there's, there's all kinds of preconceived notions about the Mormons. And I, and I think my favorite part was being able to answer those questions and kind of straighten things out like that. But yeah, there were different tactics that we would, we would use to try and just get people's attention. Dude. I mean, I think it's just such great life experience. Like what? If I, I feel like almost every 19 year old should have to do something like that. I mean, yes. you get in a more common level, say, like, go sell a product door to door or whatever, you know, Cause, I mean, essentially, it's kind of the same. You're doing the similar stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You just happen. Your mission is pushing out that religious message. And then sure. so the question I want to ask is, like, is that is the mission more about spreading the word or is it more about your guys's experience and growing into something you know yeah because you don't like sign people up right there right like <laughs> <laughs> no not a conversion <laughs> right, no, there's, right there's a there's a process yeah you know, we, they they need to learn certain things they need to agree with certain things we, we want them to pray about it we want them to feel like they're making the right choice and if and if they don't want to that's fine too yeah um the purpose of the mission more to your question it really is kind of a personal conversion type thing. yeah because i mean you send out a bunch of teenage boys to talk about <laughs> church. I mean, they're going to, they're going to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and, and they do. Yeah. But sure. um, for us, it's, it's really just about learning to have compassion on other people, learning to serve other people, um, learning to put up with different personalities. Cause I had some companions that I just wanted to choke. Um, in fact, I was, I would actually have, trouble missionaries assigned to me because i would straighten them out oh really um i wouldn't take crap from them yeah um essentially and i actually chewed a few of them out made one of them cry <laughs> we'll talk about that another time but um it was it was a way to learn leadership personal responsibility you have a certain amount of money that you um we pay to do it too okay you're you're paying about four hundred dollars a month to go out and do this so we, we were given a certain amount of money each month that we had to be you know frugal and responsible with so i mean i agree i think this is something that most if not all teenagers should be doing yeah you know not necessarily a religious mission but going out and selling something right get on out there go yeah. do yeah. Yeah. take care live go Spread go yeah, figure it well, out. But having yep. some structure, right, yeah, makes a uh, makes it a little bit better to for I don't know the cause and the like, learning Definitely. experience. You're not just out there roaming around. You're like, hey, I'm here to actually do this. This is right. why I'm approaching these people. Right. And I mean, I I remember being around that age and being super uncomfortable with going up to anyone like I didn't know yeah. or like it would have been tough to knock on doors and cold call people and stuff like, but those yeah. are invaluable like lessons and, and confidence builders and all kinds of stuff you gain. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole reason we do it. We're not expecting to, you know, randomly knock on a door and all of a sudden the person's like, yes, I want to be baptized. Right. We're expecting them to say no. Right. right. And, and I think that's the whole part of it is you need to, to be prepared for someone to say no, to reject you. Yeah. But then you just, dust yourself off and go on to the next one right you know getting back up after you've been locked down yeah so there are a lot of invaluable lessons that i learned from it so no awesome. wonder he got on the staff he got hired yeah exactly <laughs> yeah no wonder the persistence he doesn't take uh, no for an answer <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean those are the skills that, bu yeah. that you built in that two-year yeah. mission sure. that you know part of your whole life experience and everything else but those directly brought you like into this room sure yeah yeah that's uh, awesome. I agree that every guy, everyone should have some kind of mission. It brings the entitlement factor. Yes, you know. dude. Oh, uh, yeah. And I think that's something that we need. Totally. Right now. Yeah. So. I mean, for us, a, le a lesser, lesser kind of total thing, uh, experience, but still kind of in the same vein was in college at fraternity and you got to go recruit guys and then yes. 
you know, you're approaching all these new guys. I'd say it's probably way easier, honestly, than going door to door. And but I mean, <laughs> you think about it, you're trying to get someone to agree with and join your cause, what you stand for. So right. I, I see a lot of similarities between the two. We for don't. Sure. We, we never had keggers. Yeah. As missionaries, but you know, we we would. Uh, it was it was really the same thing. Going out and talking to people about what you believe in, like for your fraternity, what were the standards? What what right. did you? What did you plan to do? And and in that fraternity, you would have service projects. You would have things that you would learn how to do. So I, you know, very similar, very similar idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I actually had a couple of guys that were in my mission with me that went to Utah State with me mm-hmm. as well. And they one of them was in a fraternity. I think it was, uh, we called them Pikes. But, um, Pike Apple Alpha. That's the one. And uh, he was trying to get me to join, but I was like, eh, I don't know, you know, because I was still kind of, I was, I was really more worried about trying to get good grades than I was about partying, because I knew if I started partying that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do well. Oh, we can handle that objection. So you have to have a certain <laughs> GPA just to be in the fraternities, and you have guys who are in your majors and all the different classes who are a little okay. bit older. They can help you with your work. We have different study groups. We have required study hours. So academics are a very important part of a fraternity. And what we found is that most guys who have joined Mm. have actually increased their GPA after joining. So if you've got any other objections. (laughs) And also, you know, what career field are you going into? Oh, great. We have about 10 guys in the alumni who are all in there. (laughs) And they come by. We have a whole networking opportunity, job job placement, internships. It appears I made the wrong choice. (laughs) <laughs> no just come up no that's uh overcoming objections every objection is a question yeah there you go. now just you flipped it yeah fair enough you'll hey, get better grades and if in you all, join. yeah just in all to make completely clear really none of the good fraternities lead with any partying or anything i mean and honestly it's not about parties at all this is just fun social byproduct sure that happens negative stereotype often of <laughs> it happens a lot <laughs> This is a social <laughs> byproduct that is really common. You got to let off some steam, man. You know? I understand. Oh, that. man, dude. I've had the academics objection probably 10,000 times. <laughs> it seemed like you were right on deck. Oh, uh, yeah. Take that. Ready dude, go, no dude. problem. I love it. Off the bench, it. cold but frightened. It's <laughs> got the lines. I have done the fraternity pitch <laughs> in eight years. Well, you're still shocked. Right attack. back into <laughs> it. You're making me want to join Sigma Nu hey. at this point. Hey, well, yeah. you joined the long hair, so yeah. you're pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. <laughs> Good enough. I'm going to get this, this Sigma Nu crest tattooed on me. Dude. Well, <laughs> so. uh, you got to get initiated to do that, so. Would you got the koozies, yeah. though? Yeah. Yeah. It's official. Yeah. I actually like that snake. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Respectable. So, dude, getting back into the hair a little bit more mm. and the cosmetology game, and so... How long were you a barber, and what kind of hair types were you working with, and what you know, what what were you doing exactly with the hair? Um, unlicensed, I've been cutting hair for a really long time. I would actually cut um, other missionaries' hair on my mission. I okay. Cut my own hair, so I mean, it was something that I was fairly well used to. And uh, growing up, going to the barber shop with my dad was always, you know, a really fun experience, and it was something that. I, I just really loved the culture sure. of it because, you know, it was a place for guys to go, let off some steam, talk about how their wife's pissing them off <laughs> and, and what whatnot. Yeah. But it was it was it was a fun time to just kind of be with the boys. You know what I mean? Just right. hang out. Sure. And so that was always very alluring to me. And so I, I had said, you know, let me finish my degree and then I'll go into cosmetology and see where it takes me. But we got to a point when we moved out to California where I was just like, you know, I, I'm really tired of working part-time jobs, doing stuff that I don't like. I'm just going to go in now and get it done. And then as I'm working, I'll finish my degree. That was the plan. So I went to San Diego city college in their cosmetology program and, um, was able to certify, but in order to certify, you have to do a lot of different things. You have to be proficient at coloring, uh, different chemical procedures. It's not just cutting and styling. So yeah. had to be pretty well versed in all of that. But once I so was, this is just to be clear, this yeah. is different than like barber school, right? Yes. Okay. Yes it is. Okay. 
and um, cosmetology a broader <laughs> field. Yes, your barbering is primarily men's hair. Um, cosmetology is men and women's hair, nails, makeup, all that sort of thing. Uh, okay. And uh, as a cosmetologist, you tend to make a lot more if you're working at a salon because I mean you can charge two, three hundred bucks for a cut and color. Sure. Yeah. You know, we had we had stylists that would come and talk to us um, that were having like thousand dollars a day yeah you know just rolling in it and so that was very appealing but um the more i did it the more i realized i really preferred cutting men's hair um it was it was easier for me the guys were a lot easier to talk to sometimes the women just were completely you know silent the whole time and that was always awkward but you know the guys would always shoot the breeze yeah and so as soon as I licensed, I went to a barbershop that was right down the road from me. It's called Rocknick's Barbershop, and it's primarily a, a black barbershop. Most of the guys that go in there are African-American, and uh, that was a baptism by fire because mm-hmm. working with the tightly coiled, texturized hair is so different from yeah. uh, straight or even wavy hair. It, you, have to, you have to use the clippers and then brush it down clippers brush it down because if you don't you're gonna leave a mess yeah and it's once you get the hang of it it's really easy to fade that type of hair but if you mess up they're gonna know about it yeah so i was able to get very proficient at fading very very quickly so most of my clientele were uh african americans and that was uh i mean i loved it but i think there was a lot of trust coming from them yeah you know a, a lot of people didn't want to sit with me because i'm not yeah i'm not i'm not black and um and i get it but it was uh it was a learning experience to be sure of and so i'm grateful for the guys that were patient enough and brave enough to sit in my chair with me yeah so, yeah but then the pandemic hit and uh clientele went right out the window and so at that point you know as i said earlier finished school and came to be with you guys and you and everyone else started growing their hair long yeah isn't it beautiful it is it's incredible yeah like i have seen got more guys with long hair over the past couple weeks than i ever have in my entire (laughs) life and i think it's just wonderful uh so now that it's coming fully back in loving it by the way you've uh, been coming into the office with a few different looks a few different styles Mm -hmm. testing out some different things Mm -hmm. uh you're at the shoulders pretty significant significant waves so it doesn't fall straight down so it takes a long time for your hair to fall it does what are some insights this time around what have you noticed what uh, any particular challenges or long hair problems that you're encountering uh, for me, it's the the frizziness, the, mm-hmm. the poofiness of the hair. That's why I'm wearing a hat today, because I woke up and I looked like, you know, Bozo the Clown. Um, you know, if you can wear a hat to, to keep it down or a head wrap, definitely do that. But for me, a lot of it lately has just been embracing, you know, the the wave and the curl, because for so long I tried to fight it, but it's like, dude, there's nothing you can do to change it. You know, you can get it chemically straightened, but as it grows out, it's just going to be curly again. So for me, it's, it's really come down to embracing the fact that I have really wavy, psychotic looking hair. And I think it's great. It's a unique, I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It is. It's a vibe. (laughs) It is a vibe. vibe. It is a vibe. Uh, (laughs) Curious. What does your wife think about the hair? And she had a birthday recently. Big happy birthday to her from the long hairs. Happy birthday, honey buns. How does she like the hair, and what about any family, friends? It was harder growing up in Utah. What are yeah. the uh, reactions nowadays that you're growing it back out? So wife has really come a long way. <laughs> um, I think being – I mean, I have always had really wacky hair. I think having all of that sort of people trying to shame – my hair and I and I'm weird as hell anyway so I've always been doing different things with my hair and I think um throughout all of that Sam has really stuck by me whether it's a mohawk or a huge undercut or at one point I had purple hair I think growing it out long she's like well he's not coloring it he's not <laughs> uh doing anything crazy with it it's just long so I think she's she's come to accept it um 
whether or not she will accept the hair going all the way down to my lower back, we'll have to see how that one goes. But Way to go, Sam. We're with you all the way here. Yep. She's... Man, I'd be lost without her. But um, my family, they're fine with it now. My parents are like, you're an adult. You do whatever you want. Um, at the time, they, I think, I think they're, you know, wanting to keep it shorter was really just so that they were afraid of other people judging me. And so I think they, they wanted to avoid me getting hurt. Um, but now that I'm older and they realize that I just, I don't give a shit what people think, they're like, do it you know um i haven't really faced any pushback from the folks in utah because i i don't ever go there anymore but it's i don't know it's it's just nice now yeah you know it's a little easier when you're working at a company that promotes long hair too it's kind of like everyone's like oh yeah it's part of the job yes well i mean how many (laughs) how many job interviews have i been on where i've had to ask them what are your grooming standards do i need to shave do i need to cut my hair and all of them have been like no but then, you know, you're still thinking, I probably should. But then I come here, and Rubio's given us the orientation. He's like, dude, longer the better. Like, <laughs> yes. Uh, Finally, you know. It's the place to be. It is. It is. I can't recommend it enough. So the Great cut, 2024. I mean, that's just the go-to line. Like, anybody can drop. Shut down easy one. any naysayers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I was talking to a kid last night. Um he had left a message on one of our posts on Instagram and he was saying, you know, I really don't want to cut my hair, but you know, as a diesel mechanic, it gets greasy or it gets caught or, you know, whatever. And he's like, I really don't want to cut it, but I'm going to have to, if we, if we don't find a solution to it. And I was just like, dude, message me and let's, let's have a chat. Yeah. You know, and, and I was giving him some pointers and then I said, uh, you know, it's great to have you in the community. And he was saying, dude, I love this community so much. And I'm like, well, dude, are you coming to the great cut 2024? And he's like, what's that? Yeah. I was like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opportunity for you to donate hair to children with hair loss. And he's like, dude, that's exactly what I've been wanting to do. He's like, mm-hmm. I love long hair, but I want to help someone out with it. And I was like, dude, grow it out till 2024 and come see us. Come hang out. Yeah. You know? So Yeah. Uh, just that reaction of like, what is that? Is this like, in the grand scheme of all the people out there, like no one knows about the great cut. No, no. <laughs> we have like the Consider. tiniest little mm-hmm. sliver of people. know considering like the audience that is down at AF oh, for, for it. Oh, for sure. Well, it's <laughs> you know well, you published an article a few weeks ago, and you're like, well, what if I don't want to cut my hair? Don't Fine. cut it. Don't. But you know, <laughs> just come. still come. Yeah, just come yeah. hang out with us. You know, there's going to be a lot of cool people there. There's a lot of like-minded individuals. Like, it's just a, it's a gathering of the bros. Totally. You know? And you're going to find friend, make new friends, and all this. Like, well, I think that was, I've said it before on the podcast, but that was one of my highlights of the, of the Great Cut was just mm-hmm. seeing the guys who had been talking online or whatever mm-hmm. all hanging out. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. there's a group of 10 guys over there and they're all having beers and chilling and hanging it like all day and mm. taking pictures. And yeah, it's just like you can't beat that physical, you know, connection. Yeah. And like we didn't introduce them. Right? Like no. we're walking around doing a million things. <laughs> yeah. Max anxiety. But it, it, it all it all just happened naturally. Yeah. Everyone totally. came. The venue was there. And that's all that we needed. Mm-hmm. And it just all came together. Yeah. And yeah, if you don't want to cut it, just still come. It's yeah. going to be. There's no judgment. If you don't want to cut it, cool. You know? It was extraordinary. It's going to be even far more extraordinary the next time around. Oh, God. We got to start marketing. Oh, yeah. get the Good. tickets Three out. Don't have the tickets out. Uh, what venue are you doing? We've got to launch <laughs> tickets now. Yeah, uh, pro- COVID protocol. Free sale. Oh, jeez. <laughs> A lot of details. A lot of details. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine what the COVID protocols would have to be to cut the hair to actually pull it off? Right. (laughs) They would have to be in lines outside, spaced six feet apart. It would be just awful. So, thank God it's in 2024. Everyone get vaccinated. (laughs) Please. For the good of society. Yeah. Great cut. It's a full go. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we've come to learn you have a broad spectrum of interests. Yeah. Weightlifting, jujitsu. You're you're going out to the mat a couple once twice a week. Twice a week. Going pro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, tell us about that. 
How's the jujitsu? We've had a, a handful of, I don't want to say masters in every category, but we've had some very experienced and some yeah. some masters and some mm. jujitsu men and women on the podcast. Tell us, mm. tell us about doing it, about rolling. It's um, been well. It's, I mean, first and foremost, it was an opportunity to learn self defense, um, and also an opportunity to lose my huge gut. Um, so I do conditioning with Clark Gracie, uh, whose grandfather actually invented the sport. And so it's been really cool to work with him. Um, sometimes he'll be my workout partner if we're doing circuit training. So every Wednesday we do that and it murders me every time. And then on Fridays we have actual rolling where we're learning techniques and procedures and all that sort of thing. And it's been, it's been painful. Um, but it's it's so enjoyable at the same time it's like you're getting your ass kicked but the guy that's kicking your ass is teaching you how to fight back and yeah. he's he's not your foe he's not your enemy he's your mentor he's just trying to help you and it's learning to become comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation mm. and so for me it's it's been it's been amazing um with your kind of build and like how your arms are and everything uh-huh. like do you find yourself uh, you're able to muscle out of stuff or is technique always beating like winning when you're like with a littler guy or something? So, I mean, jujitsu was kind of created so that smaller guys could defeat bigger opponents. Right. So I'm almost at a disadvantage. Um, and also being Italian, I have short stubby limbs. Mm. And so it's harder for me to do the average maneuver like the triangle choke for me is particularly difficult because you have to you know have your legs in in such a way that you can basically choke the person out but mine aren't really long enough so i have to like have him be like okay wait a second while i put my leg up here (laughs) okay give me your arm (laughs) okay now tell me when you're ready to tap yeah you know so um, like just slapping that on someone is yeah, not happening. It, I'm gonna have to find my own system of doing this because it it really is hard. Um, so, but it's it's I don't know it, the fact that it's more difficult for me. I actually kind of like that because it's if it comes easy to you, you eventually get bored with it. Yeah. So I like the fact that I'm gonna have to modify a few things. So Clark's been Clark's been really really good at helping me learn different techniques in that regard. That's rad, man. Yeah. Um, the uh, the other th- uh, other physical stuff you're into, weightlifting. You've been into it for a long time, right? We've had a lot of weightlifting guys. Uh, number one guy, Jesse Marvin. You know, the professor. Yeah, the professor. Oh yeah. Jacked. Yes, he is uh, monster. A nice inspiration for all long hairs out there. Yes. Um, to get your shit you know, together. Yeah, totally. We've been. We've had our uh, El Rubio and I have had our times where we've been pretty jacked. Uh, you know, got to be honest, we've softened up here over the last uh, year or so. But you know, we could bounce back pretty quick. We're we're on the we're on a streak here. We got a few workouts in this week. We're on the up. We're, on the up. we're back on the up. We're back on the up. Firming. Uh, but what is it for you with the with the weightlifting? Obviously, you're experienced in that realm. So, kind of tell us, uh, wh- like, how'd you get into it, and why is it important to you, and how'd you get your biceps that big? Yes. <laughs> Ask what everyone wants to know. Point of order. Um, Let's start at the beginning here. I no. Let's go right into the biceps. (laughs) (laughs) So I inject steroids directly in. No. um, I I have always been. You could say I've always been obsessed with uh, physical activity. When I was uh, five or six years old, I don't know if you guys remember that TV ad for Eight Minute Abs that little VHS tape that they would promote. They also had eight minute buns, which didn't really. Yeah. Chris is a huge seven fan of eight minute, minute abs, abs, <laughs> seven minute abs. Yeah. Um, and so when I was, when I was five or six, I was asking my mom if she would get that for me. And she's like, you're five. You don't have to worry about your body yet. Yeah. And so it's always been in the back of my mind. I used to beg my father to take me with him to the gym in the mornings when I was, as I was growing up. But he said, you know, you have to wait until you're 12, 13 because you're going to stunt your growth. A lot of good that did me because I'm still really short. <laughs> um, but when I was about 13, 14, started lifting um, and was really more into the athletic aspect of it because of uh, peewee football and uh, track and all that sort of thing. 
Uh, but as I got older, got into the bodybuilding aspect, I noticed that my biceps responded very well to the punishment that I would inflict on them. Um, and so did my quads. And I was like, this is really cool. And so I got into the bodybuilding sport, started uh, researching bodybuilders and all that sort of thing. And uh, eventually integrated powerlifting as well. And it's really become kind of a, a therapy for me. Yeah. Um, it's a way to cool off. I like to lift usually alone because I can just block everything out, even the crappy music that the gym is playing and just focus on, you know, how's your form? Are you contracting enough? And the pump is just, it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah, totally. So it's, it's really, it's pulled me out of a lot of bits of depression by doing that. So a lot of it's mental health, but I mean, having large guns helps too. (laughs) Yeah, man, I feel that for sure. Uh, just always feel better after being at the gym, mm-hmm. moving weight around. Yep. Uh, and yeah, there's something too about you know when you really get into a rhythm at mm-hmm. the gym. Not like I really don't care about anybody else in the gym when I'm when I'm there. Rightfully. But so. when you start really working so hard that people start coming up to you like and saying stuff, mm-hmm. that's when you know like. Man, I'm really kicking ass in here, you You're know. You're doing something right. Yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking about like our experiences at uh the what was the Crunch? No, not Crunch. Well, Crunch too, but when when we went over to the more hardcore gym in uh I would we Boulevard, Boulevard Fitness. Boulevard. Right? Okay. <laughs> Boulevard Fitness. Okay. When we first showed up there, you know, there's like cuz it's pretty it's a pretty hard everything's concrete. Yep. You know, it's concrete it's a hardcore but yeah. And there's some serious guys in there and gals and, you know, everybody, especially if you're the morning crew, mm-hmm. it's like when the, you know, that's when the for real, the for real hardcore. Show yeah. Yeah. So yes. we would be in there. And at first everyone's like, who's these, who are these freaking guys? Yeah. Think they're, yeah, these they wieners? think they're fucking cool. <laughs> but you know, Hey, a month after them watching us, like we had the like most jack guys up there coming up to us and being like, so what are you guys training for? And, uh, you guys, you guys, uh, are you guys professional athletes or <laughs> like, saying what's up, <laughs> just yeah. chatting it up, saying what's up. It's, it's the, the recognition of the dedication. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's exactly totally. what it is. Yeah. If you see someone show up at five o'clock, Every five days a week yeah, for, for three two months. months three months straight <laughs> yeah. you're, you're it doesn't matter to. really what they're doing <laughs> as long as they're not just on their phone the whole time right. right but you see them working and that you're right it's the recognition of the dedication yep that's, that's all absolutely it, is. it. Mm-hmm. uh shout out to brian morehouse the real lohali el levanta pesos <laughs> who has just been Maybe the most consistent guy on all of our channels, just yeah. hitting it constantly, hitting PRs, just always putting the work in. Not always PRs, too. Some not even doing it as well. He's got the bound shears on the inner wrist, so when he's getting the sick bench pump, you just see yeah. it going up. Mm. Dude, you're badass, man. We see you all all the time. That consistency is just uh, legendary. That's yep. what we're talking about. Your standard is what we strive to achieve. <laughs> badass, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of the bound shears, that's something eventually, once I feel like I've earned it, I'm going to get that inked on my body somewhere, too. Nice. Uh, Actually, after your 90 day introductory period, it's a required (laughs) uh, part of the position. Lower uh, left eye. Might be a little sooner than what you were thinking, actually. Okay. (laughs) Well, that's good enough for me, man. Uh, Morena was talking about, yes, uh, I think it was last week. He was like, get it on the inside of your forearm because it's like the secret. You pass a long hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're talking Total about flash. the small one, the quick flat, the badge flash. Just uh-huh. whoosh, yeah. Whoosh. Mm-hmm. And then you just do the full back piece, too. <laughs> <laughs> Giant bound shears. Just full crest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. So, El Spence Reno, uh, mm-hmm. we're getting a little close here, but you have your first guest blog post coming up. Been hashing out some ideas, some brain, some hard brainstorming. Mm. Put a little bit of pen to paper. Got some concepts. Mm-hmm. Wait, not met? true. He already has one. Well, there's a, a couple for sure that we've been talking about. I don't know. I, no, I, enjoying the ride. Selected. I, I did. Is published ride. on the blog by El Spencerino. El Spencerino. By, it is. Yes. Enjoying the ride. The photo shoot day hits his first blog. He's already yes. got. He's already yes. one in. Great call. Great call. <laughs> so I can't say your first, but this will be your first that you really are creating from. Scratch, obviously, you know, Garvinsky's putting it together and there's a video and mm. yeah, great feature, by the way, really, really nailed it. But your first one from concept to creation that you're going to be 
uh, publishing for the long hairs. What are some concepts? Have you decided on the concept? What, what have you got in mind so far? Well, the one that's really been sticking out in my mind, um, and I have loads of ideas. Like my nipples are bursting with ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so Full aerial not ascent. a line you hear from people often, <laughs> no. but I like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's it comes from a very special place. Um, the one that I think is going to be the happening nips. next. <laughs> my tits. The one that's going to be <laughs> happening next is um, thinking about badasses of the old west. Love it. And so I've got several mountain men. I've got some gunslingers. I've got some American Indians that I'm putting in there that were just super hardcore people. Um, and I think we're going to be, I'll be into a little bit more of the details with Rubio when we're done here. But stay tuned. Awesome. It's going to be wickedly sick. Yeah. That's yeah. killer. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Can't wait. Yeah, bro. That will go along well with the newly released hair ties, uh, the Giddy Ups. Yeah. Giddy <laughs> Up. Actually, we might need to design some more badass ones. Honestly. Those ones are cartoony. They're dope, they're, but they're uh, more cartoony. They're cartoony. They're cute. Not yeah. like the hardcore. Yeah. Western. No. We were, we were talking West. about. Gunslinging, yeah. gun yeah. drawing, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we were talking about, you know, what are we going to call these <laughs> these ties? And I was like, we could call them the tombstones because you know, it's like that, one of the dude. best Westerns yeah. ever made. Yeah. And he was like, but they're a little bit soft. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe not the tombstones. Yeah. I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. No, the giddy ups are perfect for that. Oh, no, absolutely. Those ones. No, that nailed it. Yeah. We do need to do a harder version, though. For sure. The gunslingers. Yeah. The gun yeah. The tombstones. Yeah. Yes, or the poncho vias. Yeah. We have our, we've already got the natives. Which also makes me think we need to come out with some, like, West Coast gangster ones. Too. Oh, dude. I'm way ahead of you on that one. I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. Yeah. Yeah. It all started with six collections and no black ties. Yeah. It's unbelievable. We have uh, almost, I think, 60 collections now. Yeah. Uh. I don't even count anymore. <laughs> the ones that are getting ready to drop, that there is a certain type that is one of my absolute favorites. I'm not going to say anything yet. Go ahead. No, I you can. Grateful. No, preview. Preview. It's good. <laughs> the traditionals. Oh, yeah. Uh, you like those ones? Oh, Sick. my word. Oh, he's yeah. wearing them. He's yeah. got one. Yeah, dude. Those are so sick. Yeah. Like, because old school American traditional tattoos are yep. my absolute favorite. And so I saw those and I was like, good Lord. I thought those were pretty nailed, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're badass. Yeah. I mean, it just looks like uh, it's just old flash that you would see in a tattoo parlor. Yeah. So brilliant whoever came up with that one. That you'd see on an old Navy sea dog's arm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. A lot of exciting stuff, guys, coming down the pipe. We are so pumped to have El Spencerino on the team and have you guys here and uh, a lot of new hair ties coming out and don't worry the shampoo conditioner will be back in stock soon it is coming i know everyone's sick of hearing like uh the excuses and covid we are too so are we. we we are too trust us mm -hmm. uh, a lot of manufacturing bugs but uh we're squashing them the best we can and uh you know, hopefully on this next round of shampoo conditioner, we will have it in supply for more than two months. Just forever. Just always. Yeah. yeah. Always and forever. I think we covered it. Yeah. yeah. Pretty badass show. Glad to have you on the team. Glad to have you on Let It Ride, episode 94, approaching our 100th episode, not too far away. Mm. Could be six weeks from now or six months from now. <laughs> we'll never know. Just see how it all shakes out. Yep. Uh, but write us in, guys. Let us know what you thought about the show. If you just absolutely need to get on the team, you could follow Spencer's uh, example. And really, for anything that you're pushing for in life, that's the biggest takeaway for me today. Absolutely. Uh, taking the lessons that you learned from your two-year mission and applying them <laughs> certainly towards your employment with the long hairs <laughs> yeah. and uh, getting your way in here. Yep. And you're making a huge contribution right out of the gate. Mm. So uh, put in an order. Have Spencer pack it up for you. He'll probably write a little birthday note or some <laughs> nice thing on, on your packing slip because <laughs> he's just to. so pumped. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. And that does it. Thanks for tuning in, boys. Until next time. See you. See you.